All right, girls. So in this video and in this class, I'm going to show you how to how you can create a melody for your composition task. So it's going to presume a couple of things. The first one is that you've gone through the the composition startup guide and that you've come up with a chord progression. So let's pretend that our chord progression is going C chord. Um, and let's do that. That's bar one. And then let's say that you've gone F chord and that's bar two. And then you've gone, let's say G chord. Um, and that's bar three. And then we're finishing up on a C chord. So let's just pretend that that's the same, the first four bars, a bar one, bar two, bar three, and bar four. Remembering that for section A, you need to have eight bars. So you'd need to do a second version of that by either repeating it, uh, and so on. Now the next thing is that we're also going to have a rhythm pattern to this. So let's say that the rhythm pattern goes uh, one, two, and three, four. So it's C, 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 or crotchet, quavers, crotchet, crotchet, and that's the pattern. So as a guitarist, if I play that and I've got that rhythm pattern, I would do this. I'd go C, 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 C F, 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 G, 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 C, 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 C. C. And that's my chord progression. Now, the next step is that you need to understand what notes are actually part of that chord because that's going to really make a difference into what we get the melody to play and we're going to get Elise to play a melody in a moment. So, in a C chord, you've got the notes C, E and G. In a F chord, you've got the notes F, A, C. In a, oops, in a G chord, you've got the notes G, B, and D. And in a, uh, let's see over here, and back to a C chord, we've got C, E, and G. So what it means is that if I can actually just play those three notes, so I can just go C, E, G, and play those notes together, and then F, A, C, and then G, B, D, and then back to C, E, G. And they're the notes that actually belong in the chord. But what happens on the guitar and on many other instruments, including the piano, is that if you've got extra notes, you double up on these. So I might have one C, one E, one G, and this string here, which isn't being used, happens to be an E. So we add that in. This string here happens to be, or a C, if I put my finger on it, that's another E. So really, a C chord on the guitar is actually going E, C, E, G, oh sorry, E, C, E, G, C, E. It's just doubling up over and over again. Now this is important because these notes, um, any of these notes, Elise will be able to play and it's going to sound fine. So for example, if I just strum my pattern, all right, and get Elise to play a C, can you play a C anymore? It doesn't matter where. All right, so hold it for four counts. You're just going to play one, four counts on the note C. So let's make, um, this is the guitar part. This is the flute part. It's just going to go um, C. There. Let's make you um, a different color so it sticks out. What colour would you like, Elise? Um, I don't care. Pink. Good. <laughs> right, Emma said pink. Uh, I can't find pink. Red. There you go. That's right. It's not. It's not really that important. <laughs> so Elise is just going to play a C that's going to last for all of that amount of time, right? So she's just going to go like that. All right. You ready? <laughs> I'm going to play the pattern. So I'm playing my C chord and I'm playing my C pattern, my rhythm pattern, which was crotchet, quavers, crotchet, crotchet, or C, 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 C. You're going to play a C. It should work because the note that she's playing is already part of the chord. Does that make sense? All right. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? All right. This time, let's just let's just see what happens. So we're going to get Elise, instead of playing a C, let's just change that. She's going to play an E, because that's also part of the chord. Ready? One, two, three, four. Isn't it good? All right, let's do this. I get excited by this stuff. All right. This time she's going to play a G, a G note, because it's also part of the chord that's underneath it. One, two, three, four. All right, this time, let's do this. Um, let's start on a C, and if you look carefully in an F chord, 
it turns out an F chord also has a C in it. So guess what? If you play one C here, and then we get to here, and we're going to stick in somewhere there, we're going to play another C. It should still work because the C is in the C chord, and the C happens to be one of those in an F chord. So this time you're going to do C for four counts. Remember to breathe. C for four counts. But I'm going to change chords. I'm going to play the F chord. So I'm doing this, C, and then F which has a C in it, and you're going to play C, C, and so on. One, two, three, four. Now, what would happen if Elise plays, whoops, let's take here. What would happen if Elise plays a C in this chord here? Is it going to work or is it going to clash? Why is it going to clash? Because it's no C. Because it doesn't, it's not there. So let's just do it. Let's just hammer it through all and see bars. what happens. All three bars from the beginning. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. F. G. Can you hear how it's clashing a bit? All right. So. Sorry, so is there a guitar tuner? Um, that's all right. Miss. We're recording a video, but you can come and, you can come and just photobomb our video. It's all good. Uh, no, there isn't. That's a, take all the time you want, miss. It's all right. No, I haven't. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Elise. No, we've got, no, we've got to sharpen a music if you need that. Okay, so a C note, sorry, a C note here doesn't work, but have a look at this. Let's put our alphabet. So our musical alphabet goes A. Uh, let me, let's pick a different color. Let's just go blue. So the musical alphabet goes like this. We've got A, B, sorry, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it keeps on going, right? A, B, C, and so on. So at the moment, let's go to this F chord. Elise is playing a C note. She's got that note there. Now, the G chord has got G, B, D, but she's playing on this note. So what she can do is either go up to a D, because it's part of that one there, or she can go down to a B, because it's part of that one there, and theoretically it should work because it belongs there. Does that make sense? Yeah? So let's start by going up to a, um, let's go up to a D. So this time we're going to go C, C, D. Ready? One, two, three, four. C. Pretty cool, hey? All right. Let's this time. Let's finish it off. Um, and we're gonna put. What would happen if I just stick in another D here, and it's not part of that one there? Why not? Because it's gonna clash. Um, she's on a D. We could go back to a C, but we've played two of them the same. So let's just jump up to an E because that's also part of the chord. Let's go like this. So you're gonna go C, C, D, and E. Ready? One. Two, three, four. C, F, for me. Isn't that cool? It is, isn't it? It is, isn't it? All right. So this time, sorry. Um, this time. What we can do to start writing a melody is that you can just put in a note from the chord and it's going to work because it's part of the chord already. So whatever's in the background or the accompaniment part, which is what the guitar's doing, is going to uh, work with the melody part because they're basically married together. But if all you do is just play one note from there, you just play a long semi bree it starts to get a little bit boring. So let's start to make it a bit more interesting. Um, and the way that we can make it interesting in the first step is that we put extra notes that belong to the chord in there. So let's do, um, what can we do here? Well, let's go C. Okay, let's change this one and we're going to go E. So we're going to do C4, this time two counts, and we're going to go E. Now is that going to work? Yeah. So if you go C, E, it should work. Now, if you are on E, 
and your next chord is F, what's the next logical note that you could go up or down to? F. F because it's part of the chord. But if you go backwards, you go to a D, and the D doesn't belong there, so it's going to clash. So let's change that one to an F. So this time, you're going to go C, E, F, and so on. Let's see if that's going to work. One, two, three, four. We'll stop there. Does that work? Yeah. Yeah? All right. Now, um, so we can fit the notes in there and it's going to work, but we can even take it a step further by using what are known as passing notes. A passing note is a note that passes from one note that belongs to the chord to another note that belongs to a chord. So what note fits in between C and E, even if it isn't part of the chord? D. D. So what we're going to do is stick in here somewhere a D note, but this D note is not part of the chord. It's a passing note. So let's change its color um, to green. Done. All right. So the green note is a passing uh, note. So you're going to go C, D, E, like that. If you only did, if all you played was the D in there, it's going to clash. But what's happened is that because you've got a C note and then you've got another note from the chord and this one's kind of in the middle and it's only passing through, hey listen, it's only passing through, it theoretically should work quite nicely. So let's give it a go. One, two, three, four. What do you reckon? Play it again. One, two, three, four. Cool? Okay. This time, let's... Uh, da, this time, let's change this one to a B. Alright? And we, let's play it all the way through. One, two, three, Does it kind of work, or is it jumping around a bit? It works, but she's also jumping around. So what's happening is that the notes, if you have a look, from F, like C, D, E, F, are all nice and close together. But when she gets to B, like from F to B, there's a bit of a jump. So what we're going to do is fill in the gaps from F to B. All right, and the way we're going to fill in the gap is that we're going to go F all the way down to B. So we're going to go F, E, D, C, and then finish on B. So we're going to go C, D, E, oh, sorry, C, D, E, F, F, E, D, C, B. So we're going to fill in the gaps with a whole stack of passing notes, right? So, um, F, E, D, C. Now these ones happen to be all passing notes. All right, so you're going to go like this, C, D, E, F, F, E, D, C, B, E, yeah, one, two, three, four, yeah, two, three, four, all right, make sense, yeah. all right, so, now we've got B over here, so we're looking at this G chord, we've got B, let's go to that one, and then we jump all the way to an E, so maybe what we might do is put some passing notes and maybe, maybe we'll go B, D, and then finish on E. So we're going to jump to another note from the chord over here somewhere, like that. So we're going to go C, D, E, F, F, E, D, C, B, D whatever that note is, D, and then E, yeah? One, two, three, four. C, D, E. Does it work? Yeah? What note fits in between B and D? C. So there's B, there's D. Let's put up another passing note. So let's go C. And we're getting pretty close to finishing off this little melody. 
And girls, what we're doing is just experimenting. If it works, it works, and if it doesn't, change it. All right. So this time, C D E F F E D C B C D E. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Pretty cool. Let's finish it off. Well, and it's always good whenever you play a, a melody. Oh, it's not that it's good. Let me rephrase that. It often works really well if you start and finish on whatever the note of the chord is. Like if you're in C major, we've got a C chord. We finish on a C chord. So rather than finish on an E, it's going to be better to probably finish on a C as well. And we're going to jump one in here. Let's go like that. Um, C, D, E, F, F, E, D, C, B, C, D, E, C. Let's just do that. One, two, three, four. Let's see. Let's try it again. One, that's right. One, two, three, four. Let's do one more. E to C has got a passing note of D in there. So let's just chuck in a passing note, but I want it um, really close in there. So we're going to go E, D, C, like that, just to have a bit of rhythmic variety in there. So we'll throw in a D. Let's um, color it as a highly high note. So B, B, C, D, E, D, C. One, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Pretty easy? Yeah? Let us let me do something uh, a bit different. I'm going to change my rhythm pattern. You play exactly the same. I'm just going to change my pattern. You ready? One, two, three, four. Does that work? Let's make it into rock. You ready? Same chords, I'm just changing the pattern. One, two, three, four. Does that work? <laughs> right, so let's pretend that we're really happy with that part of the melody, okay? So here's, here's the next step. We need to get this, right, and put it into um, note flight. So let's start with the, uh, I'll just start with the chords. Um, I'm going to start with C, and I'm just going to make it very simple. Just go like that, C, E, G. Uh, let's make that a quaver, C, E, G. I'll just turn that down a bit. And this, of course, is what you will need to do. So I'm just copying in the guitar part. And I'm not filling in all the notes to the... Oops, stop doing that. I'm not filling in all of the notes just to make it a bit quicker. There, there, and there. So that's the first chord. Then I'm going to copy and paste this, but I'm going to change it so it's going to be an F. So there's F. Copy and paste it to make it a G. And then I'm going to finish it off with a C. Oops, sorry. Wrong one. There, there, and there. And we should have this. So that's roughly what I'm playing. It sounds a bit computerized because it's a computer. Um, but let's put in Elisa's part now in the flute, which is C, D, E, or crotchet, crotchet, minimum, like this. Crotchet, no, crotchet, crotchet, minimum, then F, F minimum, I think. No. Hey, can Elise actually do this? Can she do that? 
Can she play in the E and an F at the same time? Can you? No, why not? Because it can play one note because you hold different combinations. All right, just show us what, what, you, what do you hold for E? What do you hold for F? So you have to lift something off. So you can't lift it and press it at the same time, right? But on the guitar, I can play an E and I can play an F and play them together. Sounds horrible, but it works. On the piano, you can do it as well. So you've got to be uh, mindful of the instrument that you use to make sure that you're not putting something in that, um, that is not humanly possible. If you wanted to play an E and an F with flutes, you would need to get Elise and someone else to play two flutes together at the same time and then you could do it. All right, so let's go minimum. F, quavers, F, E, oops, F, E, like this, F, C, D, E, F, hey girls, thank you, F, E, D, C, what was the next notes? B, C, D, so crotchet, crotchet, minimum, B, C, oh, it, it keeps on sticking around, C, D, and then we're going to do a, an interesting pattern to go E, D, C. So we're going to, it's actually uh, a dotted crotchet, so I'm going to do that with a dot next to it, and go E, D, and finish with a C on the minimum. So here, C, D, E, F, F, E, D, C, B, C, D, E, D, C. That's what Elise was playing, right? So that is that written out in musical notation. So let's have a listen to it. Let's listen to the whole lot. Ah, uh, from here, thank you. Now the guitarist is way too loud in this example here, so uh, let's open up the little mixer, which is, where's the volumes? Let me know when you can see mixer. Uh, it lets you control the volumes. It's somewhere here, I can't see it. Uh, duration, pitch, measure, layout, repeats. So I'll have to look for it. Dynamics? No. There's one of them that lets me change the volume. So because the guitars are a bit too loud. Okay. Am I in the right place? I can't remember. Other side of the page over here somewhere. Instrument. Now that lets me change it around. It's one of them here. Of course, the other thing that you can do is put a dynamic in. So you tell this one, let's tell um, this to be forte. And let's tell this to be piano. And that should, I think, change the volume. So let's just quickly see. Oh, that's better. Does that make sense, girls? Yeah. Easy? You add some drums to it. We'll look at how to add a bass line to it. And that's it. Cool? Great.